everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today you're on the channel. We're going to be wrapping up our Christopher Nolan 4K Blu ray reviews with 2020's Tenet. And before we get into that 4K Blu ray review, I like to give a quick film review. So if you want to skip ahead to the 4K Blu ray review, you can do that right now. So Tenet was released in September of 2020 after a lot of delays, mainly because of the, you know, COVID 19 pandemic that ended up costing Warner Brothers a lot of money with this film. Go ahead, Kwai. Let me see you. Let me see you, Kwai. <laughs> they spent over 200 million dollars to make this movie and christopher nolan had to fight tooth and nail just to get a theatrical release they wanted to send this right to hbo max at the time in 2021 actually hbo would end up doing a full day and date release schedule as we were still in the pandemic but christopher nolan doesn't like that he makes his movies to be seen in theaters you know he uses the imax cameras you want to see this in the best way possible and in the movie theater in an imax theater or in adobe theater that's the best way to see any of his movies so of course he doesn't want you to see this movie at home he wants you to go to the theaters and because he had to fight with warner brothers to get it released in theaters the way he intended for his movie to be seen him and warner brothers actually ended up severing their relationship christopher nolan would go and make his next film just a little known movie called oppenheimer with Universal, which would end up winning the 2023 Best Picture, winning Hoyt Van Hoytema, Best Cinematographer, and winning Christopher Nolan, Best Director for the first time in his career. So if Warner Brothers wants him back, which from what I've heard, of course they want him back because most of his movies are financially successful. They're in always great quality. So of course they would want Christopher Nolan and his wife Emma Thomas back over at Warner Brothers. But it's going to be really hard to get him to come back because he just had a great success with Universal. And I'm sure Universal will back the truck of money up to his house and give him whatever the hell he wants to make sure he comes back to Universal and keeps making movies for Universal. But how is this 2020 film Tenet? Well, you guys heard my last review about Dunkirk and how disappointed I was with Dunkirk. Well, when this movie got announced and then when we saw the, you know, the IMAX trailer actually was teamed up with at the time, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. When I saw that in an IMAX theater, the best thing I saw that night wasn't Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. It was actually seeing that IMAX trailer, which is the opening to this film on the IMAX big screen. It just got me so excited to see Tenet. It felt like a return to form after Dunkirk, which I, I I told you guys, I didn't love that movie. I appreciated that movie. This felt like Christopher Nolan going back to Inception or Interstellar, you know, really operating within his wheelhouse. So I could not wait to see this. So again, I got super hyped to see this movie. I saw it in theaters and I absolutely loved it at the time. I thought the movie was fantastic. I didn't fully understand it and I didn't mind at the time. I was actually overlooking a lot of the film's flaws. And then eventually when I picked up the 4K Blu-ray and I watched it again, you know, I started to notice some cracks in the foundation. Foundation. Then I watched it again and again, and I've actually seen this movie about five or six times already. And the more times you watch this movie, the more you'll notice that this movie is actually very, very flawed. Despite being super ambitious, having great visuals, you know, Hoyt Van Hoytema, one of the greatest cinematographers today, using the IMAX cameras, the movie looks absolutely stunning. The score to this movie, not done by Hans Zimmer, but done by Ludwig Gorisad, does a fantastic job. I absolutely love the score to this film. It fits in perfectly. It kind of reminded me of the Inception score which is not a bad thing the one piece of the music during the one car chase that we actually see going forward and going backwards the score that they're using in that point of the film is absolutely stunning <laughs> I've just listened to the score numerous times on its own. I really do appreciate the score. I really do appreciate the cinematography. I appreciate the story of this movie and what they were going for. The plot of this movie, though, it gets very, very convoluted. And even watching it over and over and over again, you know, if you try and go too deep, and the movie itself, even at one point, points out to you, you know, try not to think about it. Just try and feel it. And that's pretty much what they want you to do is not think too much into it. Our protagonist is called the protagonist, played by John David Washington. And I love John David Washington. I really do. He was fantastic fantastic last year in the creator i liked him in malcolm and marie i liked him in black klansman but in this movie he just feels so generic so one note very similar to how i felt about all of the characters in dunkirk that it's just really hard to get behind him and i get it he's supposed to be us he's supposed to be the audience as he's learning we're learning we need that exposition to understand what the hell is going on especially in something like this that is very complex so he's there really supposed to be us that's why he's called the protagonist because you know what he doesn't need a name he's supposed to feel generic i just don't think that works and you know what it doesn't feel like Don Kirk you know there are characters to get emotionally attached to 
Robert Patterson gives one of his career best performances in this movie. Basically, he's Christopher Nolan. You know, he's got the suit on. He's got the hair all done. Just looks handsome as hell. He's super charming in this movie. So again, if you don't think Robert Patterson can act, watch this movie and you'll notice that Robert Patterson is a fantastic actor, as if you already didn't know that. But this movie also features Kenneth Branagh. And remember how I said that this was Christopher Nolan making a James Bond movie? Well, Kenneth Branagh is basically playing a James Bond villain, a mustache twirling villain. And I love Kenneth Branagh. And I know what he's going for with this role. And I know what Christopher Nolan was going for with this role. But it just feels so out of place. He just feels like he's overacting the entire time. He only has one note as well. So between John David Washington, who is our lead, and then our main antagonist, played by Kenneth Branagh, I feel like they kind of dragged the film down. The film itself is structured very well. Once we get into that third act of this movie, I absolutely love it. We get a lot of questions answered, and we really get sent home happy. And it feels like we wrapped up the screenplay beautifully. So, you know, you don't really think about too many of the issues leading up to the very end of this movie because they do send you a home, clearing a lot of the things that you might have questions about up. But again, if you rewatch this movie over and over and over again, you start to poke holes in it and then you realize that there are a lot more issues than you might have noticed because of the spectacle of this film and just how well crafted it is and how well shot it is. I mean, I can't lie, the action sequences in this movie are just absolutely stunning and when you watch the behind the scenes and how they had to make these action sequences work, it's even more stunning. My real issues with how some of the actors played their characters, I don't think it completely worked. I think the plot itself gets a little bit too convoluted for its own good, but you can argue, you know what? In a lot of spy movies, the plot gets a little bit convoluted and that's not the only reason you're here. And I agree with that and that's why I still think that Tenet overall is a very good film. It's just not that great film that I thought it was the first time I saw it. And I feel like now it's kind of plateaued. I feel like I understand the film completely and I understand what they're going for and it is what it is. So I don't think that this is a perfect film, but I still think it's a very, very, very good film. It's not Christopher Nolan fully returning to form with films like Interstellar and Inception. And it's not even as good as the Dark Knight trilogy, all three of those movies. I would definitely say this around Insomnia and the Prestige, where it's just a really, really good movie. It just doesn't hit those high levels of greatness that you would expect from a director like Christopher Nolan. But you know what? This is just another tool for him. And he would end up taking everything that him and Hoyt Van Hoytema learned making this film and making Dunkirk and then Christopher Nolan, all the other movies he made. I think he finally perfected his art when he made Oppenheimer. And that's why Oppenheimer is his magnum opus. But it wouldn't work without movies like Tenet, which does have issues, but it's still a very good film. And maybe you want to pick this one up on this 4K Blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now. <laughs> Well, here it is, Tenant on 4K Blu-ray, courtesy of Warner Brothers. I opted to go with the Steelbook, but there was also a slipcover release. I actually really love this Steelbook. I, that's why I had to grab it. Love the design of it. So if you come around the back, you get John David Washington again with that mask on. Of course, that means he's going in reverse. You come inside. It's a three-disc set, just like every single Christopher Nolan 4K Blu-ray is. You get a 4K, you get the Blu-ray, and then you get a special features Blu-ray, which I absolutely appreciate. And just like Dunkirk, it's, there's a little bit less special features than what we saw early on in the Christopher Nolan 4K Blu-rays. Kind of expected that, because this movie, like I said, it really killed him and Warner Brothers' partnership, so I didn't expect too much on here. But what we get is an hour and 15 minute long that you can break up in the chapters making a documentary and that's always what I asked for and I absolutely loved watching it so I have almost no complaints about the extras but I know that other people are going to definitely be disappointed or you've already been disappointed by the fact that there aren't as many as we've seen on other things like Batman Begins and The Dark Knight just loaded with extras whereas we don't get that much here but what we do get is fantastic it's an amazing making of documentary as you would expect to be leaving no stone unturned and just getting into the mindset of what Christopher Nolan and Hoyt Van Hoytema, John David Washington what they were all going through while making this movie and it really does help you to appreciate the movie even more it doesn't clear up all the confusion but it helps you to appreciate the movie even more and because this is a warner brothers release that means that it's only got hdr 10 no adobe vision and it's a christopher nolan release and that means we get no adobe atmos we get a dts hd master audio 5.1 and one big thing was the audio when this film came out was that you couldn't hear lines of dialogue while you were watching the movie even in theaters and that's just a christopher nolan thing the way he mixes his movies for some reason he puts the dialogue track a little bit too low at points while mixing the score way too high. Now, this is obviously intentional. I'm not too sure what the intention is. You know, the lines of dialogue that we do miss because if you close, uh, because if you do turn on closed caption or subtitles, you are going to figure out what they're saying. You can argue, you know, it's not that important, but some people are, are going to want to hear every single line of dialogue. And when you mix it this way, and even at other parts where you can hear the dialogue, at points you're just trying to listen for it, and that can be a little bit frustrating as well. But like I told you guys, I absolutely love the score. There's a lot of great action sequences 
is in here and the DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 is actually really, really, really good other than those audio issues, but that's not the fault of the DTS HD 5.1. That's really at the fault of the sound mix in general. Christopher Nolan, this is his film. That's how he wanted it mixed. You know, we kind of just got to take that as it is. They're not going to fix that unless other people really go and sell Christopher Nolan. Hey, you got to mix this a little bit better. He wanted it mixed this way. That's the mix we end up with, but the audio track is still very good. You know, that we still get a lot of bass in here. It's not my favorite Christopher Nolan audio track by far, but it's still a pretty damn solid one. Like I said, it has elements to really enjoy. It's just the mix itself. That it kind of can be a little bit frustrating at points, and it's been frustrating every time I've seen this film. But again, can you really fault the audio track itself when it's mixed that way? Can you fault the 4K disc? That's where it really comes down to. It is what it is, and you know, it's a little bit disappointing, but it's not at the fault of the disc itself. I still think the disc is great when it comes to the audio track. That DTS HD Master Audio is still really good. Now the visuals. Yeah, this is the best looking Christopher Nolan. 4k blu-ray other than oppenheimer in my opinion again utilizing that imax camera so even on this 4k blu-ray you're going to have the shifting aspect ratios but if you shoot most of the film in imax it becomes a little less jarring when we switch back to the regular old-fashioned shooter on film widescreen scenes which i absolutely appreciate as well because those still look fantastic regardless of how they're shooting this movie whether it's on imax or on film it all looks absolutely gorgeous so you know the source material is just in great shape i mean again 2020 film so of course it's going to be in great shape of course it's it's going to look beautiful. So when we bring it to 4K Blu-ray, it goes without saying, it is absolutely gorgeous. All in Oppenheimer, this is the best when it comes to the visuals, when it comes to Christopher Nolan. And honestly, everything since The Dark Knight Rises, all of his 4K Blu-rays for the most part, when he starts to really utilize the IMAX camera, which for me, I think is the most cinematic camera you could use because again, fills up your screen top to bottom. It's still wide. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this film is filled with great IMAX scenes on 4K Blu-ray and it just looks phenomenal. I have no complaints when it comes to the visuals. And honestly, I don't really have too many complaints about this 4K Blu-ray in general. I mean, I would have liked more extras. The audio track, the mix in general, I would have liked to be done a little bit better, but that's a Christopher Nolan thing, so I can't complain too much about it. I love my Steelbook. I really appreciate that making of documentary, so I don't really have too many complaints when it comes to this 4K Blu-ray. So how would I rate this one a score of 1 to 10? I would give Tenet on 4K Blu-ray a score of... 8.5 out of 10 and if i was going to give you guys the top three christopher nolan 4k blu-rays i would have to say that oppenheimer is still the best tenant is right on its tails and then for me i would say interstellar is at number three i don't think tenant is his best film if i was going by the best film after rewatching all of his movies i would still go oppenheimer at number one interstellar at number two and then i think i'm gonna put batman begins at number three just passing inception so after my rewatch those are the top three 4k blu-ray discs and the top three christopher nolan films and we'll be back with the series if Ever we get Memento or Insomnia on 4K Blu-ray. I doubt we'll ever get following. It's got a Criterion release right now, but I doubt we'll ever get that on 4K Blu-ray. It's hard to justify that. It was shot very low budget with very low budget cameras. Even if we clean that up to the best of quality, is it worth it to come on 4K Blu-ray? Probably not. But if we ever get Insomnia and Memento on 4K Blu-ray, we'll continue this series then. And I'm not too sure what to do next, guys. So let me know. I was thinking about doing the Star Trek 4K Blu-rays. I was thinking about maybe even doing another series from another director like Denis Villeneuve. Leave some of your opinions in the comments section below. And while you're down there, it is Friday. And that means it's time for our Digital Code Giveaway. In every single video, we do on Friday. I'm going to ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one of those questions in the comments section below. As long as you do that, you come back to Tuesday's video. We put your name on a magic wheel. We spin that wheel two times. The two names it lands on, they have their choice. The digital codes you've seen on the screen before you today and you know we've been talking a lot about christopher nolan i've asked you guys plenty of christopher nolan questions so let's try something different this movie christopher nolan was, was going for a spy thriller what is your favorite spy film of all time and you know this movie has come out in the last five years i personally don't think that the movies that come out in the last five years really can live up to most of what we got in like the 80s 90s and even the early 2000s and especially in the 1970s but i want to know from you guys what is the best film that you have seen in the last five years it doesn't matter what genre that that is just leave those answers in the comment section below and while you're down there doing that make sure you guys like this video subscribe to the channel turn notifications on share this video with your friends if you could you can even become a channel member become a friend of the channel you can become a producer for the channel like john doe juggalo jason martin and mr smelly potato you can also become a director for the channel like frank from frank's media and reviews john doe juggalo and frank from frank's media and reviews have great youtube channels as well that you guys should go subscribe because i promise you you will enjoy it but if you got no money to throw away don't you worry about it we just appreciate you checking out this video we hope you enjoyed it and if you did get out in those streets tell your friends about us and then 
We'll be seeing you around.